طيب احنا في الجزء ده we're going to discuss concluding sentence ايه هي ال concluding sentence اوكي و how to write a concluding sentence وازاي نقدر نعمل concluding sentence الجملة الخاتمة في ال paragraph ركز معايا كده when you begin writing paragraphs in English you are going to need to know how to end the paragraph and we end our paragraph with a concluding sentence to conclude means to end so in this video you're going to learn how to write a fantastic concluding sentence to end your paragraph well you ready let's learn all right so what is a concluding sentence let's go over the main parts um, that you need to have in order to have a strong concluding sentence well first of all it's the last sentence of the paragraph remember i just said that to conclude means to end well a concluding sentence ends your paragraph it typically begins with طيب خلينا نقف على اول حاجه يعني concluding sentence what is a concluding sentence اللي is the last sentence of the paragraph دي بتكون اخر جمله في ايه يوسف بالظبط بتكون اخر جمله في في الباراجراف لازم دي تبقى اخر جمله في الباراجراف ودي بتعرفنا ان انت you're going to end your paragraph ودي بتعرفنا ان انت هتنهي الايه بالظبط دي الجمله دي بتعرفنا ان انا كده خلاص بخلص الباراجراف بس ازاي اعملها بقى اسمع كده a transition word that signals to the reader hey this is the end of my thought or this is the end of my paragraph um, it also can restate the topic sentence remember your topic sentence talks about your main topic your main طيب هو في ال concluding sentence احنا بنستخدم حاجة اسمها a transition word at the beginning يعني مثلا لما تيجي تنهي الموضوع بتاعك بتستخدم transition word زي كلمة finally مثلا في النهاية all things considered uh, uh, مثلا uh, in the end بتقول أي حاجة تدل على أن أنت هتنهي الموضوع بتاعك طبعا أنت لما تيجي تعمل ال concluding sentence أنت ممكن تعمل إن أنت you restate the topic sentence يعني أول جملة أنت بتقولها في الباراجراف اللي هي بتعرفني مثلا موضوع الباراجراف فأنت بتاخد نفس الجملة دي وتنهي بيها يعني بس بتعملها بطريقة تانية بأسلوب آخر بتعمل لها زي paraphrase فاهمني يوسف؟ yes طيب نسمع كده an idea and the controlling idea which narrows the focus of your paragraph It would just remind the reader about your topic and your controlling idea. And also, the concluding sentence can leave the reader thinking about something that you wrote, like a prediction, a suggestion, an opinion. We want the reader not only to read your paragraph, but we want them to think about your paragraph. So when you think about writing a strong concluding sentence, Think about it like a gift, right? The main idea is the present, you know, it's inside. Yeah, we can, in this case, we can restate the topic sentence again, or or we can what? Yeah, we can restate the topic sentence, or uh, we, uh, ممكن تعمل, uh, to leave the reader with something to think about, like predictions, ممكن تعمل, uh, predictions, suggestion, اقتراح. opinion رأي وهكذا اوكي okay. the gift but we end that gift by wrapping it with a bow and the concluding sentence like that bow wraps up your paragraph like the bow wraps up that present you're going to give somebody so how do i write a concluding sentence Let's take a look at a topic sentence for a paragraph about training for a marathon. The topic sentence reads, training for a marathon involves a lot of discipline. يعني a training, مثلا لو topic sentence هنا بيقول لي a training for a marathon. تعرف الماراثون ده اللي هو الجري. اللي هو الماراثون ده اللي هو المسابقة بتاعت الجري دي. 
فترينينج اللي هو التمرين فور ا ماراثون انفولفز ا lot اوف ديسيبلين محتاج نظام محتاج تنظيم طب ده التوبيك سنتنس ده الفكره الاساسيه بتاعت الموضوع بتاعي يعني انا لو لو انا بقول لك مثلا انت قلت لي في البدايه كده training for a marathon involves a lot of discipline طب ازاي انهي الموضوع بتاعي بقى how to write a concluding sentence لازم الخاتمه بتاعتي يبقى ليها علاقه بالتوبيك ده يوسف لازم تبقى لها علاقه بده اوكي okay? طب ازاي اسمع معايا كده right training for the marathon is our topic it's the subject of our paragraph but we needed to focus a little bit more because that's a pretty big topic And so we focused on the fact that it takes a lot of discipline. So in our paragraph, we wrote about all the ways that you have to be disciplined or that you have to be really focused in order to train for a marathon. Well, what would a good concluding sentence look like for this paragraph? All right, so this concluding sentence begins with a transition word. Like I mentioned before, uh, one of the pieces we need for a strong concluding sentence. It restates the topic of the paragraph, but uses synonyms or it uses different words. Actually here, I, I wrote out the number 26.2 to represent the word marathon. So I wasn't repeating the word marathon. Uh, fame news, هي بت... يعني هنا احنا بنقول ان احنا بنستخدم اول حاجه لازم يكون في حاجه اسمها ترانزيشن وورد ترانزيشن وورد هنا كلمه انتقاليه اللي اسمها انديد وبعد كده انا بعمل ريستيت بعيد صياغه الجمله دي بستخدم بقى كلمات متشابهه وهكذا يعني قال لك او انديد وان ديفينتلي بوتس ان ا جريت ديل اوف هارد اوف هارد ورك يعني لازم ان احنا آه... Uh, one definitely puts in a great deal of hard work يعني الشخص بيتحط في عمل شاق أو جاد in order to run 26.2 miles اللي هو 26.2 miles اللي هي بتدل على مين يا يوسف بتدل على الماراثون المسافة اللي الشخص هيجريها and make it uh, uh, and make it across the finish line and make it what across the finish line اذا انت في الحاله دي كده انت عملت ايه and make it across the finish line وعشان تقدر ان انت توصل للخط النهائي يعني فاحنا كده عملنا يبقى انت محتاج عمل شاق عشان تقدر تجري المسافه دي وتقدر توصل لخط النهايه اذا آه اذا انا انا قلت نفس اللي انا قلته في التوبيك سنتنس اللي هي الجمله اللي عملت بيها المقدمه بتاعه الباراجراف قلتها في الكونكلودنج بس باسلوب ايه يا يوسف باسلوب تاني وبكلمات تانية دي بنسميها بارافريز بنسميها ايه بالظبط وهنديك امثله تانية دلوقتي بس خلينا نركز شويه كده نجز ده and then it also revisits the controlling idea to remind the reader about what they read in your paragraph. And instead of saying a lot of discipline, I chose to rephrase that, something that means a similar thing, but uses different words again. And I wrote a great deal of hard work. And then what I also did is you can see in the topic sentence, the topic is first and the controlling idea is second. In my concluding sentence, I just switched that order again to provide some more variety. So I'm not repeating the topic sentence exactly because that would be really boring for your reader. And they might just finish your paragraph quickly and not stay thinking about it like you want them to do. Uh, uh, احنا لما بنيجي نكتب لما بنيجي نبدا الباراجراف بتاعنا بيبقى عندي فيه جزئين بيبقى فيه جزء التوبيك وجزء الكنترولنج ايديا يعني التوبيك انا انا تهيالي شرحت لك الحته دي قبل كده صح اي اي التوبيك الموضوع بتاعي ايه هو الموضوع اللي هو تريننج فور ا ماراثون ده الموضوع بتاعي اللي هو التدريب للايه من اجل الماراثون ده التوبيك 
طب انا هتكلم عن ايه في التدريب هل هتكلم عنه ان هو سهل ان هو مفيد للجسم ان هو ايه بالظبط لا انا هتكلم عنه ان هو involves بيشتمل a lot of discipline محتاج a lot of discipline يعني محتاج محتاج قواعد محتاج تنظيم محتاج عمل جاد يعني مش حاجة سهلة يعني اوكي انت عارف يعني ايه discipline آه آه نقدر نقول لك ديسيبلين آه انت قلت يوسف تاني ما سمعتش؟ قواعد اه قواعد طيب آه ديسيبلين هنا بمعنى انضباط يعني نظام ضبط او انضباط تمام؟ محتاج ضبط وانضباط في التدريب محتاج شغل عمل شاق طيب لما انا يبقى انا هتكلم عن ايه ان الماراثون ده فيه انفولفز ا لوت اوف ديسيبلين ان هو فيه ضبط وانضباط وفي يعني محتاج يعني شغل زي احنا ما بنقول لما انا جيت بقى عملت الكونكلودنج سنتنس انا ما عملتش نفس الترتيب ده ده انا بدات بالتوبيك ايه بدات بالكنترولنج ايديا في الاول قلت one definitely puts in a great deal of hard work الشخص بيتحط في عمل عمل شاق او تحت ضغط كبير in order to من اجل ان هو to run 26.2 miles and make it across the finish line فانا مش عملت paraphrase كمان لا ده انا كمان بدات بالcontrolling idea قبل التوبيك ايه قبل التوبيك سنتنس فهمني يا يوسف؟ yes. يبقى انا بدات بالكنترولنج ايديا قبل التوبيك ايه؟ <تصفيق> قبل اه بدات بيها قلت اهو في الاخر اند ميك ات اكروس ذا فينيش لاين طبعا التوبيك سنتنس اللي هو الجزء ده اللي هو تو ران 2.6 مايلز يبقى انا بدات بالده الاول قبل ده ودي طريقه ان انا اعمل بارافريز دي طريقه ان انا اعمل بيها ايه يا يوسف؟ <تصفيق> أو ريستيت للمين إيه للمين آيديا بتاعتي أوكي نكمل. And also one more thing at the end I added the uh, fact that you make it across the finish line so that it leaves an image of a marathon runner crossing the finish line in the mind of the reader so that image stays with them a little bit longer after they've read your paragraph. Okay, let's go over some of the tips I mentioned for a strong concluding sentence. First of all, use synonyms. Use words that are similar to the ones you used in your topic sentence, but not the same. You want to change the wording around so that it's still interesting all the way to the end of your paragraph, like I did in the example previously when I said instead of saying a lot of discipline I said a great deal of hard work now okay يعني أول طريقة يوسف إن أنا بستخدم في ال concluding sentence بستخدم we use synonyms بنستخدم إيها يعني يعني إيه synonyms يعني كلمات مترادفة synonyms يعني يوسف يعني زي احنا بتاخدها في العربي كده اللي هو الترادف الكلمه اللي بتساوي كلمه فانت لما جينا عملنا لما جينا احنا قلنا هنا في الجزء ده تاني هعيد لك حته صغيره كده فاكر لما جينا قلنا هارد وورك كنا قايلين في الجمله الاولى ديسيبلين لما استخدمنا قلنا ماراثون Involves a lot of a a lot of discipline. فلما جينا عملنا the concluding sentence ما استخدمناش discipline. است الكاتبة هنا استخدمت hard work. استخدمت hard work. Okay. Okay. Like I did in the example previously, when I said instead of saying a lot of discipline, I said a great deal of hard work. Now. Okay, فهمت كده فهي استخدمت a great deal of hard work في concluding sentence. فكده احنا عملنا synonyms. Number two. Hmm. 
you should also use some sort of transition word to begin your sentence. Oh, يعني برضو احنا محتاجين transition words عشان نبدأ ال concluding sentence. زي إيه مثلا transition words زي كلمة اسمع كده. And that tells the reader, hey, I'm ending this paragraph. So it's nice because like the transitions, they are bridges between your sentences so that your sentences flow together really well. And when that transition is there, it causes the flow to be really smooth for the reader and they realize the paragraph is ending and I'm prepared. Then you also can switch the order of the topic and the controlling idea. الطريقة الثانية زي ما قلت لك احنا بنستخدم كلمات ترانزيشن وي يوز ا ترانزيشن يعني كلمة انتو بنستخدم كلمة تعرفني ان انا خلاص هنهي الموضوع بتاعي زي انديد زي فاينلي واخر حاجة ممكن نستخدم كمان نعمل يعني زي ما قلنا سويتش ذا اوردر بدل ما نبدا بالتوبيك وبعدين الكنترولينج ايديا لا هنبدا بالكنترولينج ايديا وبعدين التوبيك اوكي Like in the previous example, I had training for a marathon and a lot of discipline. And then I just switched the order in the concluding sentence. And I put a great deal of hard work first and then running 26.2 miles. And when we switch up that order, it creates variety. And again, it makes the sentence more interesting. And lastly, to give the reader something to think about at the end. You're not just writing this paragraph for no reason. Your paragraph has a purpose and it's always to get into the mind of your reader. And when you have a super strong concluding sentence, that reader continues to think about what you wrote for a while after they've finished reading. And you want them to be thinking about what you wrote. Because let's say you wrote um, an opinion paragraph and you want to change their mind and your concluding sentence is super strong, well, they're going to think about your opinion and maybe they'll change their mind to agree with you. I'd like to take a moment here to include some transitions for a concluding sentence. Uh, conclusion transitions. These are not all of them, but these are some that will help you strengthen your writing by including them in your concluding sentence. We have as a result, clearly, finally, for these reasons, in brief, in sum, in the end, overall, and thus. And I'd like you to So here, Yusuf, we have some concluding sentence transitions. بعض الكلمات اللي أنت قلية اللي أنا بستخدمها عشان أنهي بها ال paragraph بتاعي. Number one, as a result. What does it mean as a result? معناها إيه؟ عشان إيه؟ As a result هو نتيجة لذلك يعني نقول كده لأن result معناها نتيجة. We call it result. We, أو, أو ممكن نقولها كمان result نقولها إيه؟ result اسمها إيه؟ result آه يبقى as a result ونتيجة يعني ونتيجة لذلك يعني as a result طب clearly what does it mean clearly؟ clear معناها واضح طب what does it mean clearly؟ موضوح بالظبط كده بوضوح او بلا شك يعني <تصفيق> بعد كده عندي كلير uh, فاينلي uh, يعني في النهايه ممكن انهي بيها برضو فور ذيس ريزنز لهذه الاسباب معناها كده فور ذيس ريزنز يا ريت تكتب الكلام ده تسجله عندك عشان لما تيجي تكتب باراجراف تنهي الموضوع بتاعك بكلمه من الكلمات دي ان بريف وات داز ات مين ان بريف <تصفيق> طيب in brief آه, معناها بإيجاز أو باختصار in brief 
بيبقى ان بريف معناها ايه يوسف بايجاز او باختصار بايجاز او ايه باختصار بالظبط بايجاز او باختصار ان بريف بعد كده عندي ان سم وات داز ات مين ان سم بقى مخايب ااا ايه انت قلت ايه؟ مخايب لا لا هي خالص انت لو عارف معنى كلمة صم ممكن تعرف هي صم اصلا بمعنى يلخص او يجمل يبقى ان صم دي معناها يعني يعني وملخص ذلك يعني نقولها كده ان صم اوكي اوكي حتى كلمة sum up معناه يلخص يبقى in sum في الملخص يعني أو الملخص من ذلك in the end برضو معناه في النهاية طيب uh, overall what does it mean overall overall معناه بشكل عام يعني بشكل عام أوكي أو أو إجمالا يعني آخر حاجة ممكن برضو أنهي الموضوع بكلمة thus بكلمة إيه؟ thus اللي هو لذلك بالظبط كده thus هنا بمعنى لإيه؟ لذلك أوكي نكمل your sentence is grammatically incorrect. A lot of times when my students are starting out and they start writing transitions and they're starting um, writing paragraphs in English, I just tell them to pick the transition that they can spell easily. And once they've mastered that, then they can move on to the next one. So don't feel overwhelmed by all of these transition words. Just pick one or two to start out with get comfortable using, and then you can move on to using other ones. Next, I'd like to just give you a few example um, concluding sentences with some of these transitions. For example, in brief, these steps make it very easy to save money each month. This is a concluding sentence probably for a paragraph about um, ways that you can save money each month. Another one, in the end, Chicago is a fantastic vacation spot during the summer. So this paragraph was probably um, an opinion paragraph trying to convince somebody to go to Chicago um, for a vacation in the summer. And lastly, we have thus, staying out of debt has numerous advantages. Again, probably a paragraph discussing why you should stay out of debt um, and how it's a good thing in your life. So you can see here we have a bunch of transition words and then we have a few examples. So feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot of this um, or write them down so that you can... Uh, ...start using them in your writing as soon as possible. The second part of this video, I want to go over four different concluding sentences that are used in different types of paragraphs. I think this will help you get a better understanding of what the concluding sentence is and what it looks like in different types of paragraphs. The more examples we go through, the better off you'll be in internalizing this information and then using it on your own. So first, let's say I were writing a descriptive paragraph and it's going to describe um, this dish I talk about to the reader. The topic sentence is, my favorite childhood dish was my mom's chicken marbella. The topic is the childhood dish. The controlling idea is the, ch the chicken marbella. Now, if I'm just gonna write a simple beginning concluding sentence, it would يعني في الجزء ده أنا عندي التوبيك الموضوع اللي هو my favorite childhood dish was my mom's chicken marbella so يبقى إذا الأكلة دي اللي هي chicken marbella دي هي دي ده الـ controlling idea ده اللي هتكلم عنه 
اوكي لكن ده توبيك اللي هو ماي فيفورت تشايلد هود اي داش look like this thus when i cook this fabulous recipe i forever remember my mother and how her chicken marbella was so special طبعا دي ده كده concluding sentence للتوبيك ده بدأنا ب transition word transition word اللي هي thus لهذا وبعد كده قلنا when I cook this fabulous recipe طبعا أنا أقصد هنا بالريسيبي اللي هو chicken marbella اللي مامته بتعملها I forever remember my mother and how her chicken marbella was so special as you can see here I restate the topic. I talk about the recipe. Instead of using the word dish, I use the word recipe. And, and then instead of using my mom's chicken marbella, I use the pronoun her just to make it a little bit different. And so this concluding sentence um, is a pretty simple one. It just restates the topic sentence. It uses some synonyms and it leaves the reader with a feeling of how wonderful and how special that dish was. Let's take a look at another one. This is for a compare contrast paragraph that shows how two cities are alike. Let's look at the topic sentence. Chicago and Houston have many similar qualities. Topic, Chicago and Houston. And our controlling idea, our focus of the paragraph was showing similarities. Another basic um, concluding sentence would look like this. In sum, there are a great deal of similarities between the Windy City and H-Town. What I did here, I used the transition in sum, and I put the controlling idea first to give a little more variety. And instead of saying similar qualities, I say a great deal of similarities, synonym there. And then um, I refer to the topic second, and that's Chicago and Houston, but I use the nicknames for those cities, which is the Windy City for Chicago and H-Town for Houston to give my sentence more variety to make it more interesting for the reader. Okay, let's... Fahamta, how did she, uh, what did she do here, Yusuf? Yes. Uh, for the first one, he amrited the bedded the control the transition word here in sum. Wahena bedded the controlling idea, added in sum. There are a great deal of similarities, but the metul similar qualities, added great deal of similarities, but the similar stardimit similarities. Wahamlet e command between. Uh, كم يعني uh, استخدمت كلمة تانية لكلمة شيكاغو اللي هي the windy city واستخدمت اتش تاون لكلمة هوستون يعني استخدمت زي مثلا نيويورك بيسموها the apple يعني مثلا زي عندنا الاسكندرية ايه الكلمة اللي بتساوي الاسكندرية يوسف الكسندرية ايه الكلمة بتساويها عندنا في العربي اللي هي اللي هي عروس البحر الابيض المتوسط صح كده فاحنا ممكن بدل ما نقول الاسكندريه نقول عروس البحر الابيض المتوسط مثلا وهكذا يعني كل مدينه كده بيبقى ليها اسم بديل فممكن نستخدم الاسم ده فهي عملت كان هنا كده اوكي to give my sentence more variety and to make it more interesting for the reader okay let's look at a couple more this one is for a 